lovely butterfly it's france welcome back to my channel everything started very calmly when i started to film this a layer a day video but today there will be drama there will be accidents there will be tears there will well let's not overdo it okay something is going to happen like an accident but let's start at the beginning first layer i started with some snow white fresco finish from paper artsy just applying it with my brayer i just wanted to have a little bit of texture going on on the paper so that when i would go in with my next layer i would have something to play with craft sheet is definitely not the best surface to film a video on but it's so easy to clean that instead of tweaking the surface that i'm working on i will be tweaking the lighting of my studio from next video on for my next layer for now i'm going in with new colors too these are water soluble so i will be playing with the watercolor effect in a minute i picked out a couple of blue shades and if you would like to know which one they're all listed in the description of this video I took out my water brush to actually start doing what I had in mind, which was to create this watercolor effect with the Neo colors. And this is where the first layer comes in and gives me fun to play with texture and watercolor all at once.
I had created the perfect background. Not perfect in the sense that this is art with capital A in my eyes, but perfect in the sense that this is what I had in mind. And when, when you have in mind comes together with what happens on the paper, it's like this bliss situation. Next up, I wanted to stamp. So I picked out one of the stamps from my uh, Natural Beauty stamp set. I took out my archival ink and I got ready for it. So this is the stressful situation where you have the perfect background and you're prepping the stamp directly on that perfect background. I ink up my stamp, I take a deep breath, I stamp, thinking, please don't ruin it, please don't ruin it, please stamp properly. And then, no! Oh my god, my perfect background is ruined! Someone save me from myself. Okay, this was slowed down for drama effect, obviously. <laughs> but yes, we have accidents too. And yes, we get frustrated with ourselves too. And when I said we, I mean all these people that you look up at that are posting on YouTube. This is how I get rid of all that negative stuff that just happened. And now I'm just thinking how to move on. I know how I want to solve this, but I'd also want to make sure that however I solve this will work with the next steps that I want to do. What I will be doing is to just restamp my image on a piece of white cardstock. I'll cut it out and I will glue it over the failed stamping. I could have gone in with my stamp positioner and re-stamped it in the exact same position. So not only does my stamp mm, didn't stamp properly, I also have like this kind of little squarey thingy at the top of my plant, but I will use that. I will use all of these things in my spread. For now, let's get cutting. I'm simply going to glue my re-stamped image on top of the other one. If this is not an option in terms of what it is you're doing, there are solutions for this, like a stamp positioner or a stamping plate, like every brand has one now. And those can help you to re-stamp the image in the exact same place. For me, this will work too, so I'm just making it easier, I think. Well, this looks easier to me than to re-stamp it with a stamp positioner and having the risk that it will fail again <laughs> when re-stamping it.
Looking back at it now that my re-stamped image is glued on top of the other one, I'm actually glad that this happened because now the image I stamped is perfectly white. As I do want to colorize it, I'm better off with a white image than the background that I could have going on. And this is me solving that little hat situation I have on the top of the plant. So I'm just doodling lines as if the plant is hanging from something and this is part of the hanging thingy system. I took out the scratch board from Caron Dash to colorize the stamped image with the new colors, but as I applied the colors on there, I actually changed my mind and decided to go in directly with the new colors in the image. To do so, however, I needed to sharpen those, so I took out my metallic sharpener. I only used the big opening and I actually sharpened the new colors just like you would do with a pencil. The shavings, however, you can keep those and put them in a little jar to colorize water. They will just dissolve and then you will have watercolor water or however you want to say that. I started with the darkest color to colorize the base of each leaf and then again used my water brush to blend it in. I repeated the process with a second color just to give my plant a little bit more depth.
To make my little plant work with the rest of the spread, I decided to go in with the little circle stamp from the Natural Beauty stamp set. Just stamping it with archival ink and then giving it the same treatment as I gave the plant, colorizing it. I wanted to give my little circles the same doodle effect as the plant had, so I went in with a fine liner and just added irregular lines around the little circles. It's an easy and small thing to do and it will bring things together in a much better way than just leaving them as such. Of course I need to add my number stamps. I mean, <laughs> there's a reason I have numbers on each and every one of my stamp plates. This time, uh, to stamp it, I inked up the stamp with the stress ink, sprayed a little bit of water, and then stamped it on the paper. And this will give me this blurry, again, watercolor effect, yet it still does look like numbers. As this spread is for the week 3 a layer a day challenge, I took out the matching sticker sheet and picked one of the words that was meant for this challenge. As everything on my spread was delicate, I wanted my word to be a bit smaller so that it would fit the mood of the spread. And unlike usually, this time I didn't give my sticker any color. I just placed it on the spread and that's it. I did want to add a couple of things though. So I went back in with the number stamp to start with and stamped it in the same way as I did before. Distress ink, a tiny bit of water, and then just stamping here and there.
I did, however, want to add a little touch of grunginess. Now, going in with splatters for this spread would not have done it because it is so delicate and you have no control when you add splatters. So instead of just splattering on black paint or ink, I decided to stamp on black splatters. So I took out the stamps from my stamp set, um, Perfect Words. They're any mini tiny splatters and they will work perfectly for this spread. This time, however, I just stamped them on with archival ink. I absolutely love how this spread exudes the delicacy that I had in mind and the calmness that I was thinking of. So one who doesn't know would never guess that an accident happened while making it. And my point is, whatever happens while you are creative soul searching, don't beat yourself up. Just flick it out with your fingers and then keep on going. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I hope I'll see you back here next time. Huge shout out to my patrons. Don't forget to put down a layer a day. Butterfly kisses.